Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Before talking about Arika, Krishna the Son, I speak a little bit about Haripada Prabhu, who the devotees here know very well. He and his wife, Falini Mataji, are well known and well loved by the devotees here. They've visited here many times and you've seen them elsewhere in, in the various yatras we have. They kindly graced our yatras on several occasions, many occasions. Uh, just, we got a message which Falini Mataji sent out widely that Hari Prabhu is dying. He's not expected to live very long. He, he got sick fairly recently. You had called him to come here and he was going to, in December, was it, you called him to come here? He was going to come and, come and stay and live here. But he's got a house somewhere else. <laughs> Uh, so, just thought I'd inform you all, you can remember him. And what should you do? Should you pray? Can you invoke blessings? <laughs> it's uh, when a devotee is superior to us in all respects, it seems a bit unusual to pray for, for his benefit, but certainly we can. Uh, pray for Srila Prabhupada's blessings on him, which are anyway th there in unlimited quantities, a life given to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada said to his disciples, just give this one life to Krishna. And Hari Prada Prabhu was one who did that. And Family, business, everything, but it was everything absolutely centered on Krishna. Another devotee who's passing away, uh, hardly any of you know, Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu, he knows him, he's, he's still there, is Satyavak Prabhu. You don't know him because I don't think he ever came, I don't know if he came down here. Maybe he came down to the south for a yatra, but you wouldn't notice him among hundreds of devotees. He's young, he's in his 30s, must be, huh? Yeah, he's uh, from Orissa, I believe. His parents are Ori, I don't know whether he's from exactly. He came in contact with ISKCON in the United States. He was working there. As I, Probably IT, I don't know, something like that. So well placed, you could say. And he joined in Seattle area. And then he was in San Diego and he was living in the temple in San Diego. But uh, he wanted to come back to India to do service. So he came first to Bhopal. He was there for some time and then he was in Baruch and then he had some sickness, and it's quite serious sickness, and for about two or three years he was trying to get treatment, naturopathy and Ayurveda and so many things. And then he was told that, okay, treatment's not going to work anymore, just get ready to leave the body. So I advised him to go to Mayapur. So he went to Mayapur, he's there now. And now we got the news that uh, there's no use to even try to do anything whatsoever to try to maintain the body. It's, it's on the way out and uh, it's a matter of days. It may be today, it may be in a week. Or, you never know because material nature is working in her own way. You may prolong longer, but there's no need to prolong either. Why, why drag on? So he realized that, and his parents are there, and you may remember him. I'm remembering him. I didn't see him very much, actually, but I must say I, I feel 
dearness. So anyway, we're all on that path. Just we should prepare that we don't get born again. Nothing surprising if anyone dies. Our doctors, like Vaikuntananda, the death is a daily business for them, right? For doctors, police, murderers, death is a daily business for them. <laughs> and uh, priests also, just uh, if you're, I'm thinking of the Catholic priests, there's a daily function to preside over funerals, almost daily. You know? And, and comfort people whose relatives are dying or dead. So, nothing surprising, but we should take it as a message to ourselves in our forgetfulness that we're all travelers on the same path as far as the body is concerned. <laughs>